A pre-trip inspection is everything on the vehicle that you must inspect to ensure that it's safe to operate on the road. All right, the tester wants to hear a couple descriptions per item that you're inspecting. And if you let your eyes tell you what to say, the items they will tell on themselves. Because anything made out of metal or plastic, you want to say BBC, that it's not bent, broken, or cracked. Anything made out of rubber, no ABC, abrasions, bulges, or cuts. And everything has got to be securely mounted, except for the frame, because everything is securely mounted to it. Sounds good. When first approaching a vehicle, you want to talk about your three L's, lights, leaning, and leaks. First off, lights. Well, all the lights on the front of the vehicle, they've got to be securely mounted. They're not bent, broken, or cracked and they're of the proper color. Red in the rear, amber or orange everywhere else. Want to make sure leaning. The vehicle's not leaning to one side or another, which would indicate a suspension, inflation, or load problem. And then we want to make sure that there's not any puddles underneath that would indicate some leaking coming from the engine department. And we'll go ahead and pop the hood. Okay, and starting on the passenger side, we got two of our three engine components that we can talk about. We'll start off with the alternator. Okay, the alternator is made out of metal, so it's not bent, broken, or cracked. It's got to be securely mounted. And when you talk about the components, you got to say what drives them. The alternator is belt driven. The belt is securely mounted, not ripped, torn, or frayed. And it cannot have more than a half to three quarters of an inch of play in that belt. Okay. Right under the alternator, we're looking for the water pump. To identify a water pump, you're looking for the largest hose coming from the bottom of the radiator and it goes right into our water pump, which happens on this truck to be right here. Water pump, securely mounted, not broken or cracked. Water, not leaking. And you gotta tell them it's gonna be gear driven for the water pump. Okay, let's go ahead and go to the driver's side. Okay, driver's side of the engine compartment. Since we already took care of two of our engine components on the passenger side, let's wrap up our third and final component. It's going to be your air compressor. Yeah. The air compressor's got to be securely mounted, not broken or cracked, and no audible leaks. Additionally, the air compressor is gear driven. So that takes care of our three L's, our three engine components. Let's go ahead and talk about three fluids, coolant, oil, power steering fluid. Our coolant reservoir is securely mounted. It's not broken or cracked. It's of the proper level and doesn't show any leaks. I like to talk about our hose going from the coolant reservoir. It's got to have no abrasions, bulges, or cuts. It must be secure on both hands and must show no visible leaks. When you talk about the oil, here's to fill the oil. Here is our dipstick. Just let the tester know that you would pull out the dipstick, wipe it clean, reinsert it, pull it out again, and ensure that it's proper operating level. All right. Then we're going to talk about our power steering fluid reservoir. It's got to be securely mounted, not broken or cracked, of the proper level, and must show no leaks. All right, when you do that, I talk about the hoses going to and from the power steering reservoir. Looks like all the hoses have no abrasions, bulges, or cuts. They're all secure on all ends and don't show any visual leaks anywhere. So that it takes care of our three threes. We got the three L's, the three engine components, our three fluids. Now let's talk about three more things that will land us to the tire, wheel, and hub seal. Okay? All right. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with the steering components. Give you a place to start, the steering shaft. The steering shaft, it's got to be securely mounted, not broken or cracked, and no excessive play. I like to mention that the U-joints, they don't show any signs of wear, no shiny metal, and they've got to be properly lubricated. My steering box, steering box as a whole, it's all securely mounted, not broken or cracked. Um, might be leaking, so I report that to maintenance. I definitely clean it up and keep my eye on it. Next, we have our pitman arm, our drag link, and our upper control arm. They're all securely mounted. They're not broken or cracked, and they're not missing any hardware. They have the castle nut and cutter pin in place. Okay, so that wraps up our steering. We'll go ahead and talk about next suspension components. We have a front and we have a rear spring hanger. The front and rear spring hanger they're both securely mounted, not broken or cracked, and not missing any hardware. The springs, we're dealing with multiple springs, so we want to make sure that they are aligned and not scissored, and that they are securely mounted, not broken, bent, or cracked. And we got two U-bolts, they're both present, don't show any signs of being loose. All right, not broken or cracked. We have a shock absorber, securely mounted, top and bottom, not broken or cracked, and it doesn't show any visible leaks. All right. Coming around, we're going to go ahead and talk about the braking system. 
Start off with the brake line. The brake hose is securely mounted on both ends. No abrasions, bulges, or cuts, and I don't hear any audible leaks. The brake chamber, securely mounted, not bent, broken, or cracked, and no audible leaks coming from the chamber. We will talk about our slack adjuster push rod. All right, it's got to be securely mounted, not broken or cracked, and no more than one inch of play when pulled. If you can pull more than an inch, your brakes are out of adjustment. That is not safe to operate. Okay. Okay, from the slack adjuster push rod, go straight to the brake shoe. Brake shoe has got to be securely mounted, not broken, not cracked, not glazed over, which would be a sign of overheating, and no contaminants such as grease or oil. The brake drum, securely mounted, not bent, broken, or cracked, and there's no signs of overheating, which would be a bluish color on the drum. The inside of the wheel is securely mounted, not bent, broken, or cracked, and there's no illegal welds as if someone tried to repair it. Inside of the tire, no abrasions, bulges, or cuts. It's properly seated to the rim. I don't hear any audible leaks. The top of our steer tire, it's gotta be worn evenly. We must ensure that it's of at least four thirty seconds of an inch of tread depth and that there's no abrasions, bulges, or cuts. Now, the outside of my tire. It might be a little abrased from skin and curves, but there's no bulges or cuts. It's properly seated to the rim and I don't hear any audible leaks. When you see the valve stem, let that remind you to tell the tester that you would check the inflation with a tire gauge. Okay, your outside of your wheel is securely mounted, not broken or cracked, and again, no illegal welds. All the lug nuts, they don't show any signs of being loose, which would be shiny threads or rust trails coming out from underneath. And our hub seal, securely mounted, not broken or cracked, and definitely not leaking everywhere. Now that we've done under the engine compartment and the steer axle, we'll go ahead and do side and back of truck and then one of the drive axles. Sounds good. Okay, I'd like to start off with my mirror bracket. It is to be securely mounted, not broken or cracked. No missing hardware, except for it is missing the plastic piece, so definitely would report that to me as the plastic cup. Okay, moving on, I'd like to talk about the handle itself. It's securely mounted, not broken or cracked, and it functions properly. The door it has no sag, which indicates to me that the hinges have got to be securely mounted, not bent, broken, or cracked. And we have this rubber seal all the way around the door. It's got to have no abrasions, bulges, or cuts. A little tore up here, so it would report that to maintenance. For the most part, it's, it is securely mounted. I like to take care of this light fixture here. It's securely mounted, not bent, broken, or cracked, and it's of the proper color. Again, red in the rear, amber, or orange everywhere else. Okay, the fuel tank, securely mounted, not broken or cracked. I don't see any visual leaks. Fuel tank cap, it's gotta have the safety chain and the rubber seal. And the fuel tank straps, they are both securely mounted, not missing any hardware, not bent, broken or cracked. The steps, securely mounted, not broken or cracked. And there's no excess debris that make me slip and fall. So we will continue going back and we want to, so we don't miss anything, start from the top and work our way down. We have the exhaust stack. It is to be securely mounted, not bent, broken or cracked. And it doesn't show any signs of any leaks, which would be black soot anywhere but the very tip top. We have our catwalk. It's securely mounted, not bent, broken or cracked. No excess debris that could make you slip and fall. We have the drive shaft underneath. It's got to be securely mounted, not bent, broken or cracked. And it's free of any obstructions. Few joints on that drive shaft should be lubricated properly and show no signs of any wear, which would be any shiny metal anywhere. We have the frame. Everything is secure to the frame. It has no illegal welds, no illegal uh, drilled holes. And our catwalk steps. They've got to be securely mounted, not bent, broken, or cracked, and no excess debris that make me slip and fall. So now we're going to go ahead and continue working our way to the back of the vehicle. Once we get to the axle, we'll start from the inside and work our way out. So moving back, we'll go ahead and talk about our mud flap bracket. It's definitely bent, all right, but it's, it's so I got to report that to maintenance. But the mud flap itself, it has proper clearance from the ground. All righty. All the lights on the back of the vehicle. 
they are securely mounted, not bent, broken, or cracked, and of the proper color. And then while you're back here, you could just mention to the tester that you have proper clearance from the back of your tractor to the landing gear for when you're turning. From the inside, working our way out, I'll go ahead and start off with the suspension components. I've got a front spring hanger, which is secure to the frame, not missing any hardware. This axle has a single spring, so we're not worried about alignment. But the single spring is securely mounted, not bent, broken, or cracked. Instead of a rear spring hanger, it goes to a rear airbag. The rear airbag has metal mounting plates, top and bottom, which need to be oh, securely mounted, not bent, broken, or cracked, and it's not missing any hardware. The bag itself is securely mounted, and there's no abrasions, bulges, or cuts, and there's no audible leaks. Don't let this shock absorber hide from you. The shock absorber is securely mounted, top and bottom, no, not bent, broken, or cracked and should, no, should show no signs of any leaks. Let's go ahead and talk about the braking components next. I have the brake lines. They are to be securely mounted on all ends. Show no abrasions, bulges, or cuts, and don't want to hear any audible leaks. The brake chamber is securely mounted, not bent, broken, or cracked, and no audible leaks. Slack adjuster and push rod coming out the back of the brake chamber. They are to be securely mounted, not bent, broken, or cracked. With the brakes released, you'd be able to pull for no more of one inch of play. With the brakes on, you just want to check and make sure that they're setting at a 90 degree angle. Slack adjuster push rod. Alrighty. After the slack adjuster push rod, go straight to the brake shoes. Brake shoes, they got to be securely mounted, not bent, broken, or cracked, not worn, dangerously thin, and have at least a quarter of an inch of material. No contaminants such as grease or oil. The brake drum, securely mounted, not bent, broken or cracked, and doesn't show any signs of overheating, which would be a bluish color. The inside of your inside wheel is securely mounted, it's not bent, broken or cracked, and there's no illegal welds. Inside of the inside tire, secured to the rim. Don't hear any audible leaks, no abrasions, closes or cuts. Top of tire has got to be worn evenly. It must be of at least two thirty seconds of an inch of tread depth. The outside of the inside tire, secured to the rim, no abrasions, bulges, or cuts. Don't hear any audible leaks. Whenever you're inspecting dual tires, you must make sure that you have no gap in between the rim and no debris in between the tires, such as any rocks or anything. Okay, would want to tell the tester. Now you would check the inflation with a tire gauge. Let that valve stem remind you. The outside of the outside wheel, securely mounted, not broken or cracked, no illegal welds. All the lug nuts, they don't show any signs of being loose. Again, shiny threads or rust trails could be indicators of looseness. Okay, got all the hub nuts, they're all securely mounted, not broken or cracked, don't show any signs of being loose. And the hub seal, securely mounted, not bent, broken, or cracked, and there's no leaks. Now that we've done under the engine compartment and the steer axle, the side and back of truck and one of the drive axles, we'll go ahead and talk about coupling or connections. When I do so, I like to start out with my electric wire. It, it's got to be, uh, it's got to show no burnt, frayed, or exposed wires. It's got to be secured to the tractor with a safety latch and secured to the trailer with a safety latch. We'll go ahead and talk about my emergency and service line. They're, they both have no abrasions, bulges, or cuts. I don't hear any audible leaks. They're secured to the tractor. They're both secured to the trailer with these glad hands that are both securely mounted with, and they're both not banned, broken, or cracked. Okay, additionally, all my hoses in line has proper clearance from the catwalk, not dragging on the catwalk there. Now we'll go ahead and look at the, the side view of the fifth wheel, and we'll do a back view of the fifth wheel. So again, starting on the top, working our way down, I like to start with the apron of the trailer. Apron has got to be securely mounted, not bent, broken or cracked. Got to have no gap or daylight in between the apron and the skid plate. The skid plate itself, securely mounted, not bent, broken or cracked. The release handle is in the locked position. All right, the pivot pin, securely mounted, not bent, broken or cracked. And the platform, which secures it to the frame, 
is not bent, broken, or cracked, and not missing any hardware. Let's take a look at the fifth wheel from the back view. From this side, you want to ensure that the kingpin of the trailer and the locking jaws, they're both securely mounted, not bent, broken, or cracked, and that the locking jaws are secure around the kingpin. Now that we've done the connections, coupling, the tester is going to ask you to inspect the trailer and one of its axles. So let's start with the very front of the trailer. Lights. All the lights on the front of my trailer. They're securely mounted, not bent, broken, or cracked, and they're of the proper color. Red in the rear, amber, or orange everywhere else. My panels in the front of my trailer, I got no holes, they're securely mounted. Doesn't look like I'm missing any rivets. The panels on the side of my trailer all the way down, no holes, it's all securely mounted. The trailer must have at least 50% red and white reflective DOT tape going all the way down. Alright, now the trailer underneath one of its frames is the cross members all the way down. See all these cross members? Want to ensure that they're all securely mounted, not bent, broken, or cracked. And if you notice, this trailer has a wooden floor, so you'd want to inspect the trailer and make sure there's no holes in the floor. The landing gear, the landing gear as a whole, it's securely mounted, it's not bent, broken, or cracked, and it's not missing any hardware. Additionally, the handle is in the stowed-away position. Okay? Don't forget to mention to the tester, all the lights on the side of your vehicle have got to be securely mounted, not broken or cracked, and of the proper color. We have the airlines underneath. The airlines have got to have proper clearance from the ground. They've got to be secured on both ends and have no abrasions, bulges, or cuts. Also, don't want to hear any audible leaks. Okay, we have the sliding track, the tandem slide track. It's securely mounted, not broken or cracked, and it's got the pins in place. Alrighty, and then the mud flap bracket. It's got to be securely mounted, not bent, broken or cracked. No missing hardware. This mud flap's seen its better days, so I would report that to maintenance. But it's about proper clearance from the ground. Okay, on most trailers you'll see that not only does it have a clearance light, but it'll have a little ABS light that you must inspect. Just let the tester know if your trailer has an ABS light that it is securely mounted, not broken or cracked, and it does of the proper color. Okay, moving on back. Let's go ahead and start with the doors. The doors themselves, they're securely mounted. They're not broken or cracked. I don't see any holes in my doors. All my hinges, they're all securely mounted, not broken or cracked, and not missing any hardware. The locking poles, they're not bent, broken or cracked. They're properly locked top and bottom. The handles are in the locked position. Okay, it's got a rubber seal around both doors. You got to make sure the rubber seal is securely mounted and it has no abrasions, bulges, or cuts. Just let the tester know on this particular trailer you'd report the seal to maintenance. The back of the trailer has got to have 100% red and white reflective DOT tape all the way down. And all the lights on the back of the vehicle. They are securely mounted, not bent, broken or cracked, and they are of the proper color. Okay, now that we've worked our way back, let's go back to the trailer axle. You really only have to inspect one side of the axle, but to get a better view for the camera, we'll go ahead and inspect this side. Instead of a front spring hanger, you got a trailing arm mount. Trailing arm mount, securely mounted, not broken or cracked. The trailing arm, instead of a spring, trailing arm is securely mounted, not bent, broken or cracked, not missing any hardware. Goes to a rear airbag. Airbags got the metal mounting plates top and bottom. They've got to be securely mounted, not broken or cracked, not missing any hardware. The bag itself, no abrasions, bulges or cuts, and no audible leaks. Don't forget the shock absorber again, shock absorber. Securely mounted, top and bottom. Doesn't show any leaks, and it's not bent, broken or cracked. <coughs> Bless you. Now we'll go ahead and talk about the braking system. Okay, brakes. All the brake lines are secure on all ends. They have no abrasions, bulges or cuts. I don't hear any audible leaks. Brake chamber, securely mounted. Not bent, broken or cracked, no audible leaks. On the revert, on the back side of the brake chamber, on the back side of the brake chamber, you have a slack adjuster push rod. Got to make sure that with the brakes released, you would have no more than one inch of play when pulled. And when the brakes on, want to make sure they sit at 90 degree angle. All right, but that they're also securely mounted, not bent, broken or cracked. Now we'll go ahead and go from straight from the slack adjuster push rod to the brake shoes. They've got to be securely mounted, not bent, broken, or cracked, not glazed over, which would be overheating, no contaminants such as grease or oil, 
and not worn dangerously thin has to be at least of a quarter of an inch of material at its lowest point. We have the brake drum, securely mounted, not bent, broken or cracked, and no signs of overheating which would be a bluish color. Inside of the wheel, we have got to make sure it's securely mounted, not broken or cracked, no illegal welds. Inside of inside tire, it's got no abrasions, bulges or cuts, securely seated to the rim, no audible leaks. Top of tire has got to have no abrasions, bulges or cuts, it must be worn evenly, and must be at least two thirty seconds of an inch of tread depth. Again, when you inspect dual tires, must make sure that there's no gap in between the rims and no debris in between the tires. Inside of the outside tires, uh, secure to the rim, not bent, broken or cracked, no audible leaks. When you see the valve stem, let that remind you to tell the tester you check the inflation with a gauge, tire gauge. Outside of the wheel, it's got to be securely mounted, not bent, broken or cracked, no illegal welds. All my lug nuts, they're present. They don't show any signs of being loose, which would be the shiny threads or the rust trails. And the hub seal, securely mounted, not bent, broken or cracked, and not leaking. For the external light check, you will be in the truck and the tester will remain outside. Once inside, turn the key on and switch on all of your lights. You need the tester to verify that all of your lights are operating, so ask him or her to stand at the front of the truck. We're going to check all the lights on the truck before moving on to the trailer. Start at the top of the truck and work your way down. Yell clearance lights. If the lights are working, the tester will repeat clearance lights. Group the next two lights together since they use the same light. Yell headlights and the tester will repeat. Click your high beams on and yell high beams. Operate the left and right turn signals and the four-way flashers for the tester. Ask the tester to move to the left side of your truck. The light on the side of the truck performs three functions. When the lights are on, it's a clearance light. It's also a left turn signal and a four-way flasher. Operate and call out each of these lights to the tester. Move the tester to the rear of your truck. Yell tail lights and the tester will repeat. Step on the brake pedal and yell brake lights, left and right turn signals, and the four-way flashers. Now move the tester to the right side of your truck. It's the same as the left side, a clearance light, a right turn signal, and a four-way flasher. The truck is finished, so repeat the same pattern for the trailer. Ask the tester to stand at the front of the trailer and verify the clearance lights. Move the tester to the left side of the trailer and verify that the clearance, left turn, and four-way flashers are all functioning. At the back of the trailer, start at the top, clearance lights, tail lights, brake lights, left and right signals, and your four-way flashers. The right side of the trailer has a clearance light, a right turn signal, and four-way flashers. So the last part of your pre-trip inspection is going to be an in-cab inspection with a brake test. We're going to start out with five safety items. The seatbelt is not ripped, torn, or frayed. It latches properly and unlatches properly. I have my fire extinguisher. It must be secure in the cab, not bent, broken, or cracked. The right type of extinguisher for the load and fully charged. Three safety triangles must be secure in the cab, not bent, broken or cracked, and must be outfitted with the red reflectors on them. If I were to have spare fuses, I would keep them in the glove box. And I gotta make sure the city horn works. This one does not, would report that to maintenance. And make sure the air horn works. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and talk about the glass the windshield wipers, the defrost and heater, and the interior lights. Think of it as a spiral shape. The mirrors, all the mirrors, they're all securely mounted. They're not bent, broken, or cracked, and they're adjusted to me. With an exception for the hood, front hood mirror, it's cracked, so I'd report that to maintenance. My windshield is securely mounted. It's not broken or cracked, with an exception to this little pit in the windshield. That would definitely report to maintenance. And there's no illegal stickers on the windshield. Now I'll go ahead and turn the key to the on position. Once I do, I'm looking for the ABS light to come on to let me know the light works and then turn off to let me know the ABS system works okay. ABS light on and off. 
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the wash button to check the windshield wipers. My windshield wipers are securely mounted. They function properly. The metal is not bent, broken, or cracked. The rubber is intact. I hear the motor for the washer fluid, but there's no fluid, so I would either report it to maintenance or go ahead and add some myself. Now we'll want to make sure that the heater is on defrost and feet. Go ahead and turn that on, wait a moment for it to kick on. And you actually want to feel to make sure the defrost is working properly and that the heater is working properly. Moving around, we have the indicator lights. Want to check the left signal, the right signal, the four-way hazards, and for the high beam indicator, you must have the headlight on. Pull back on the indicator lever, and here's our high beam. Now I'll perform a safe start because we must have the truck running to check the gauges and do the brake test. Safe start entails pushing the clutch to the ground, making sure transmission is in neutral. With the parking brake applied, I can turn the key. Okay, we have five gauges we're concerned about. Oil pressure, water temperature, voltmeter, primary and secondary air gauges. My oil pressure is at or rising to operating level. The gauge works properly with no warning lights. The water temperature is at or rising to operating level. The gauge works properly with no warning lights. My voltmeter is at proper level. It must be between 12 to 14 volts. The gauge works properly with no warning lights. My primary and secondary air gauges, they're both at or rising to operating level. The gauge, they work properly and there's no warning lights. Then we'll do a brake test. When performing the brake test, it's very important to tell the tester every step you're doing and then demonstrate. Tell him first and then show him. So, very first step, we'll check the truck's parking brake. You want to make sure the trailer air supply is pushed in and the parking brake is applied. Press the clutch all the way to the ground, drop it down into a first gear. And I want to lightly lift up on the clutch to tug against the parking brake to make sure that we don't go anywhere and the parking brake works. So the parking brake works properly. Now to check the service brake pedal, we'll want to push down the parking brake knob and I'll roll forward at about five miles per hour, loosely holding the steering wheel. Then I'll stop by engaging the clutch and brake to make sure the service brake pedal works and that the truck doesn't pull to the left or to the right. The service brake works properly. From here, touch only the key. Turn the engine off can release your pedals, but turn the power back on. Again, ABS light comes on, turns off. Now to check for leaks, we're going to go ahead and hold pressure on the service brake pedal and want to lose no more than four PSI in one minute. One, two, 59, 60. Okay, and now we'll want to check for the low air warning light and buzzard to come on around 60 PSI. So I'll fan the air out of my brakes until I hear the warning sound and see the warning light. Right around 60 PSI, low air warning, light and sound. Both come on. Next, I'll keep fanning the air out of my brakes until the spring brakes make the knobs pop out between 40 to 20 PSI. And now, I'll be watching the knobs instead of the gauges. Okay, there the knobs popped out right above 20 PSI. That's between 20 to 40. Now we'll go ahead and do another safe start. Clutch to the ground, transmission, place in neutral. Obviously, parking brakes pulled out. And we'll go ahead and turn the key. For the rest of the test, to make the air compressor work as hard as I can make it work, to make the air go up as fast as I can make it go up, 
going to balance my foot on the accelerator, revving the RPMs to operating range right where the green starts, right around 1200, never more than 1500 RPM. In this particular vehicle, the primary air gauge is going to rise to about 100 before the secondary even starts moving. We're going to want to time the rest of the test off of the secondary or slower air gauge. Once you get to 85 PSI, you'll want to time it and make sure your air rises to 100 within 45 seconds or less. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So the very last step to the brake test is to make sure the air governor cuts out between 120 to 140 PSI. That's when you hear the psh sound. So that will be your pre-trip inspection in the same order in which you'll be asked to conduct on the CDL Class A test. Hope you've enjoyed watching. This was Adam from CDL College. Goodbye.